Good evening and welcome to morning prayer for Friday, May 22nd. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun and we look to the evening light. We sing to God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way, kindle our hearts, and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is great like our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might among the peoples. You, with your arm, redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. Our New Testament reading tonight is from Luke chapter 17, beginning in verse 20. Being asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them, The kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed, nor will they say, Look, here it is, or there, for behold, the kingdom of God is in the midst of you. And he said to the disciples, The days are coming when you will desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, Look there or look here, do not go out or follow them. For as the lightning flashes and lights up the sky from one side to the other, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. Just as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating and drinking and marrying and being given in marriage until the day when Noah entered the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise, just as it was in the days of Lot, they were eating and drinking, buying and selling, planting and building, but on the day when Lot went out from Sodom, fire and sulfur rained from heaven and destroyed them all. So will it be on the day when the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, let the one who is on the housetop with his goods in the house not come down to take them away. And likewise, let the one who is in the field not turn back. Remember Lot's wife. Whoever seeks to preserve his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life will keep it. I tell you, in that night there will be two in one bed. One will be taken and the other left. There will be two women grinding together, one will be taken and the other left. And they said to him, Where, Lord? He said to them, Where the corpse is, there the vultures will gather. Okay, that New Testament reading is some very enigmatic Jesus. Uh, and one of those texts that uh, some will interpret uh, incorrectly, and from it they will... Uh, use it as a proof text for the rapture, the rapture being uh, when uh, the before the end comes and at the beginning of the thousand years of Christ's reign on earth, before the end, the uh, faithful will be gathered to God in heaven and everybody left behind will have uh, this period of, uh, of the tribulation for them to uh, find their way to uh, God. Uh, a second chance before the real end of time, uh, which is a false teaching and is not supported in Scripture. And they, they use that here where it says, okay, one will be taken, one will be left behind, as if that's an actual, oh, well, one will be taken and the other one will be what just happened. And that, that's not at all what that means. It simply means you'll have people in one family, one who is faithful and one who is not, and when the end comes, that's the end. And, and that's all there is to it. So there, there is no you know, intermediate period where you will have a second chance. That's what Jesus taught the whole time is no one knows. 
no one knows the day or hour and there are no second chances your second chances right now you're living it uh, so there is no thousand years of tribulation you're in the tribulation we're in the thousand years which began when christ ascended and will not end until he comes again uh, so a little end times theology for this evening okay our book of concord reading tonight is the second part of article one of the creed I think we're beginning in, yeah, paragraph 17 tonight. Uh, continuing from uh, where Luther was saying, uh, we learn from this article that none of us owns for himself, uh, nor can preserve his life, nor anything that there is here listed or can be listed. This is true no matter how small and unimportant the thing it might be, for all is included in the word creator. Luther continues, Further, we also confess that God the Father has not only given us all that we have and see before our eyes, but he daily preserves and defends us against evil and misfortune, Psalm 511. He directs all sorts of danger and disaster away from us. We confess that he does all this out of pure love and goodness without our merit as a kind father. He cares for us so that no evil falls upon us, but to speak more about this belongs in the other two parts of this article where we say Father Almighty. Now, all that we have and whatever else is in heaven and upon the earth is daily given, preserved, and kept for us by God. Therefore, it is clearly suggested and concluded that it is our duty to love, praise, and thank him for these things without ceasing. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17-18 In short, we should serve him with all these things as he demands and is taught in the Ten Commandments. We could say much here if we were to wander... Uh, about how few people believe this article, for we all pass over it, hear it, and say it, yet we do not consider or see what the words teach us. For if we believe this teaching with the heart, we would also act according to it, James 2.14. We would not strut about proudly, act defiantly, and boast as though we had life, riches, power, honor, and such out of ourselves, James 4.13-16. We would not act as though others must fear and serve us, as is the practice of the wretched, perverse world. The world is drowned in blindness and abuses all the good things and God's gifts only for its own pride, greed, lust, and luxury. It never once thinks about God so as to thank him or acknowledge him as Lord and Creator. This article ought to humble and terrify us all if we believed it, for we sin daily, Hebrews 3:12 to 13 with eyes, ears, hands, body, and soul, money and possessions, and with everything else we have. This is especially true of those who fight against God's word. Yet Christians have this advantage. They acknowledge that they are duty-bound to serve God for all these things and to be obedient to him. We ought, therefore, daily to recite this article. We ought to impress it upon our mind and remember it by all that meets our eyes and by all good that falls to us. Wherever we escape from disaster or danger, we ought to remember that it is God who gives and does all these things. In these escapes, we sense and see his fatherly heart and his suppressing, surpassing love toward us, Exodus 34, 6. In this way, the heart would be warmed and kindled to be thankful and to use all such good things to honor and praise God. We have most briefly presented the meaning of this article. This is how much is necessary at first for the most simple to learn about what we have, what we receive from God, and what we owe in return. This is a most excellent knowledge, but a far greater treasure. For here we see how the Father has given himself to us, together with all creatures, and has most richly provided for us in this life. We see that he has overwhelmed us with unspeakable eternal treasures by his Son and the Holy Spirit, as we shall hear. See Colossians 2.2. And Monday evening, we will begin with Article 2. Articles 2 and 3, I think, are the best uh, best part of the large catechism. Um, there, there are so many good things in it, but, but those two articles in particular are very, very good Luther. Okay, together we confess now the Apostles' Creed and the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, true God and true man, we thank you that you have redeemed us poor and condemned creatures, not by any of our works, merit, or worthiness, but by your holy suffering, death, and shedding of blood. O Lord, your suffering was great, your torment was heavy. We cannot comprehend how many your stripes, how deep your wounds, or the bitterness and painfulness of your death. How inexpressible is your love that reconciled us to your heavenly Father. In great fear of death you sweat blood on the Mount of Olives, drops of blood that fell upon the earth, and there, abandoned by all your disciples, you willingly gave yourself into the hands of those who led you mercilessly, bound hard and cruel from one unjust judge to another. You were falsely accused and condemned, spit upon, scoffed at, and struck in the face with fists. For the sake of our misdeeds you were hit, whipped, crowned with thorns, and treated wretchedly, like a worm and not a man. You were despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, so that even a heathen heart took pity and said, Behold the man. For the sake of our sin you were counted as sinner and hung up between two evil doers as a curse. You were pierced in hands and feet with nails, and in your highest thirst you were given vinegar and gall to drink. Finally, in great pain you gave up your spirit so that you could pay our debt and we could be healed by your wounds. O Lord Jesus Christ, for this and all your other suffering and pain, we give you thanks and praise. We pray you let your holy bitter suffering and death not be lost on us, but grant that at all times this may be our comfort, and that we may boast in it, and that as we ponder it, all evil desire in us may be snuffed out and subdued, and all virtue may be implanted and increased, so that we, having died to sin, may live in righteousness, following the example you have left us walking in your footsteps, enduring evil with patience, and suffering injustice with a good conscience. Amen. Lord Jesus, your kingdom continues to be in our midst as you come to us now through holy water, holy words, and holy food. Help us to see that your kingdom is a kingdom of suffering, but that through suffering we will be prepared to enter into glory when you return of that final day. I thank you, dearest Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, that you have worked in us a constant desire for your word, and thus both the desire and performance, according to your good pleasure. Now we see the truth of what the Spirit said through David, when your word is manifested, it gives joy and makes wise the simple. Seal in us, therefore, all the words of prophecy in this book, and take not the word of truth out of our mouths. For we hope in your judgments. It is ever our treasure and sweeter than honey to our mouths. It is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Yea, preserve unto us your word, for it is the joy and comfort of our hearts. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day, and I pray you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great evening. Good night.